Uh, so with us for this one, uh, Paul Ballas, who uh, helped break the story uh, on Cancelo going to Bayern and has written extensively about Pep and Manchester City for The Athletic and our Manchester City correspondent, uh, Sam Lee, who uh, the bosses book you um, if they think the wheels are coming off. Is that is that the only time you uh, you appear with me? Yeah, is that's, that how that's it pretty much it. That's for this podcast, for radio stations, <laughs> TV shows. If City are doing well, you won't see me. But if, if if there's any signs of trouble, then then I'll be there trying to explain what's going on. Um, is it a sign of trouble? Just, I mean, well, I'll come back to the transfer in just a second with Paul. But just an overview. Do you, do you see it as a sign of trouble? Um, I suppose the, the the sign of we're we're lucky in the media because I think a lot of what we say is always viewed with a bit of suspicion, or at least you know why do we trust these guys? Do we trust these guys? But when the manager comes out and says something and just clears up the situation for everyone, it's just so helpful. So when Guardiola came out after the Spurs game and he just told everybody at length what was going on at City in terms of hunger and desire. You know, everybody knows that. There's no dispute in it. And this is just, um, it's not a symptom of that. It's its kind of one of the, the causes of it, really. So is it a sign of trouble? The biggest sign was obviously what Guardiola was saying and the fact that he came and said that publicly. And part of that, one strand of that, is Cancelo and his kind of attitude behind the scenes. And yeah, because Guardiola laid everything out for us, it's kind of easy to understand. Yeah, and so we'll delve into that over the course of this podcast. There's loads that you can read on The Athletic as well. I'll tell you how to subscribe uh, a little bit later on. Take us through the deal, Paul, and because you exclusively broke it on The Athletic with, with David Ornstein. So go through how it happened. Yeah, uh, basically, if we want to talk about the deal, about the operation, we don't need to go really far because we have to go to last weekend. Which which is where like everything unfolded. Um, we were being told that after Friday's game that City played against Ar- Arsenal on the FA Cup, um, there was like a breakthrough on the relationship between Pep and Joao and the dressing room and the acti- and the attitudes and the body language that um, Pep was seeing there. Um, and City basically. Well, they hold the conversation and they decided just to take an executive decision there and just to um, look for the best solution. Um, on the weekend, Chiki started working and on Sunday, it was all done and dusted with with, with Bayern M- M- Munich, basically. Um, so uh, on Friday, there was like the last episode that Guardiola needed to see, if you want to call it that way. But it's been something that has been cooking from the last weeks. Um, I'd say since Cancelo came back from the World Cup, um, where he didn't have like a, a, a starting position on the lineup for Portugal on the most crucial games. Um, sources from inside the dressing room told us that he didn't come back in the best form or in the best attitude, however you want to put it. Um, and he struggled to make the team basically since that point. Uh, the games that uh, he was on the starting eleven, he didn't deliver probably <laughs> the performance that Pep was expecting. But the main reason was what happened behind the scenes on on a daily basis at the City Football Academy on the training ground. Um, and basically, I mean, we I, I, I think that Sam and me we have been together here speaking about Hull and how City provides Pep with all the pieces that he needs. But again, if Pep is happy at City and feels back at City, I guess. Or my my intuition is for decisions to just draw jo- Cancelo here. Te- just take me back to you said about uh, Cheeky got to work mm-hmm. once it once it was decided. Um, got to work with only uh, clubs that are abroad. Um, or only, a, or only with one particular club in Bayern. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a really good question. The thing here, who played, which played like a really big role, is that Bayern were like long term admirers, so Bayern didn't hesitate and were like really quick to close that deal because Julian Nagelsmann wanted a fullback as Joao Cancelo. Bayern has been struggling with fullbacks over the last windows, um, and I think it was. Probably, if he had to leave, it was probably the best solution for all the bars because he's not joining a rival on the Premier League. 
Um, he's going to a big club. He's going to play the championship, uh, the Champions League. Sorry, not the championship. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. um, and I guess that all the parts are are going to be kind of satisfied with with how all was supposed to end. I, I, and the reason I ask that, Sam, is I wonder whether um, the success of Zinchenko and Gabriel Jesus at Arsenal and what that has done for Arsenal has made me change City's view of when they where they offload players to them. Because I, I would, in the past, it strikes me they've always been incredibly grown up about it. And I'm not saying they're not being grown up now, but I wonder whether there's an element of going, whoa, hang on a minute. We've strengthened Arsenal. Let's just take a, a let's just take a step back. Uh, I don't know because if you think about those Arsenal moves, and not just Arsenal, but Raheem Sterling to Chelsea, yeah, but no, nobody's talking about that now because it hasn't worked out. Yeah. So it, there's a there's a huge amount of hindsight with these things. Well, but, there is, but that's why I say they've always had a very they've always been incredibly. I sort of grown up, I could say relaxed, yeah. I suppose, about where they move their players onto. Yeah, absolutely, and it, it's all part of. If a player wants to go there, like if 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 Kevin De Bruyne had said suddenly, "I want to go," go, okay, we'll bring an offer, and he go, "Oh yeah, by the way, we have got an offer." They'd be like, well, I'm "All right, okay." I'm sure they'd have a chat and say, well, "Can we convince you?" And if he says, "No, I want to go to Real Madrid now," and they're going to offer this, they'd go, "Right, okay. If you don't want to be here, then you can go." And that's whether it's Kevin De Bruyne in a great attitude, or you know, Jesus and Zinchenko, who you know weren't kicking out, weren't desperate. Yeah, you know, well, not so much desperate to leave. They wanted to, well, Jesus certainly wanted to go to Arsenal. That was the first choice. But it wouldn't have been a major, major problem had they stayed. Yeah. Because they're kind of good guys and good guys in the dressing room. And those guys didn't play a lot over their time at City, but they always had a good attitude. Whenever they came back in the side, they gave 100%. And that's basically what Pep wants. But then if you think about the Cancelo one, when it's got to a situation where he obviously wants to go, but City are kind of like, ultimately, City thought they were better. For the second half of the season, not having Jao Cancelo, not having such a top player, than keeping him. So in that sense, they were kind of looking that there was a club there to take him with an option to buy, which is fairly large, and I'm sure Bayern will try and negotiate it down, but it's a, it's a good option included. But I think if Bayern weren't there, and let's say let's say Chelsea is an easy example. I'm surprised Chelsea weren't sniffing around. But let's say, <laughs> but let's say, but let's say Chelsea were. I think given the situation City were in. First of all, I think if a player wants to go, they'll let them go anyway, regardless of attitude. But if they really want them to go because the attitude's not great and they think they're better off without them, I think they'd let them go, like especially to an English club, almost, because they want to get rid of them. They were they were lucky that Bayern Munich were there. Um, just as a separate point, it's quite funny because with all this Jesus and Sinchenko chat, a lot of City <laughs> fans have said, oh, you know, it's a domestic rival. Couldn't they have sold them abroad? Well, I mean, there's no... There's no money abroad, really. There was no interest from abroad. And yeah. I've seen quite a bit yesterday saying, oh, we've sold Cancelo to a, a Champions League rival. So where are you expecting these guys to go? They've got to go somewhere. Um, and yeah, it is it is a rival for the Champions League. But look, City are always kind of comfortable with what's best for, for their own environment because they can control that, ultimately. That's probably the way, best way to put it. If they go elsewhere and they thrive, fair enough. But what they got to do is control what's going on in their own dressing room. And if that's good for them, then they can move on and you know, best foot forward kind of stuff. Right near the top of the podcast, you also mentioned his struggles at the World Cup. I mean, this is not this is not a player in form for the last three months. Exactly, and probably that's that's been the whole point with Cancelo. I mean, if you have to understand with this situation and how he is as a character, I think that you can read that on the article that Sam and myself have put together. Um, Cancelo, when he uh, arrived at City, he wasn't like a guaranteed uh, a, 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 a starter, and he didn't deal with it in the best way possible. He is not happy when he's not playing. He just suffers. He thinks that he can play. He has the talent to play. And when he's not in the right state of mind, um, his best talent doesn't flourish, basically. And I guess that the fact of not having um, the continuity that he's had in past seasons uh, has influenced uh, this 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 year, um, and it's something that, of course, played a part in Pep took him like this final the the decision of just letting him go because you don't want a player who is difficult to manage in that regard. In that regard, that if he doesn't play, he is not happy. And you have Nathan Ake, who probably he's had plenty of reasons to be unhappy in the last two or three seasons because he hasn't been like a regular at Man City, but now he's 
probably at his best level at the club. And there are not many reasons just to take him out. So um, there's no easy solution here. Um, and yeah, that's that's where it all ended up, basically.